Don't you hate it when, after arriving at the airport, you realize that you probably could have slept in for another hour? I think I overestimated how difficult it would be to get here this morning. What's up, everyone? Yes, it is early, probably too early, but I'm here at Dulles International Airport to catch United Airlines flight number 424 to San Francisco. It's been years since I've been here, and I've totally forgotten how nice this place is. Anyway, I'm flying Polaris Business Class on the Boeing 7878 this morning, and since I'm already checked in with a mobile boarding pass, this check-in footage is just fluff. However, it is the nicest terminal footage you'll see in this entire video because, spoiler alert, the United Airlines terminal is pretty much the opposite of fluff. Anyway, in order to get over to the United Gates in Terminal C, it's going to require a quick ride on the inter-terminal train, which actually bummed me out a bit. Does this mean that I won't get a ride on one of those quirky, wheeled people mover things that Dulles is so famous for? That was actually one of the things that I was looking forward to the most this morning, if only because it would have provided for some pretty sweet B-roll. Oh well. Being the newest and most efficient way to move from terminal to terminal, I assume this means that I won't have to walk very far to reach my gate. Right? But then again, <laughs> I'm terrible with assumptions, so I really think I need to stop doing that. At least I'm getting my steps in this morning. Is it wrong for me to assume that the United concourses here at Dulles Airport would be just as nice as the main terminal? I gotta say, this wasn't exactly what I was expecting. I mean, you can see that they tried their best with what they had to work with, but it is what it is. Anyway, without lounge access this morning, I had to fend for myself when it came down to finding some breakfast. And yeah, it kind of looks like I'm hanging out down at the local DMV, but... I can assure you that I was very much enjoying this quiet gate that I found at the far end of the terminal. And would it be a sand spotter video without any cheese and crackers action? <laughs> Absolutely not, so excuse me a moment while I take care of business. With that out of the way, I wandered down to gate C3, which is where my flight to San Francisco would be departing from. It wasn't exciting. And terminal C being what it is, the lack of windows meant that I didn't have any airplane footage to show you this morning. Which is okay, because what you're about to see is totally going to make up for it. <laughs> it's basically going to cancel out all of the crappy terminal footage you just saw. Okay, now we're getting serious. If this looks familiar to you, it's because these are the exact same seats you saw in my 767-300 Polaris review. However, this feels really different. I think it's mostly because of how big the 787 windows are, but the fact that I was seated in a smaller section of the business class cabin behind the galley makes it feel a lot more private. So far, so good. I can't see sh <laughs> out of these windows, though. Anyway, yeah, United 787 Business Class is pretty much the exact duplicate of what I got to experience on the flight out from Los Angeles yesterday. Which is a good thing, because that was fun. There's still no sign of any proper blankets and pillows, though, which was my biggest gripe about the flight out from LA. Maybe they'll hand them out later? <laughs> I know that's not going to happen, but I guess it doesn't hurt to stay positive. Speaking of wishful thinking what's for breakfast this morning. There was real no way of knowing since they didn't hand out any menus, but at least I know where the nearest emergency exit is. And what can I say about this armrest that refused to stay put? That's gonna be annoying. Oh well, I can't really complain with a view like this right outside my window. Of course, if it all goes to plan, I'm gonna sleep all the way to San Francisco so these windows won't be of much use. Here we go. Total flying time over to San Francisco today was estimated to be 5 hours and 33 minutes, 
with, and I'm paraphrasing here, seriously butt-clenching turbulence on the descent and landing into SFO. No, the captain didn't actually say it like that in his welcome announcement, but <laughs> I could totally hear it in his tone of voice. To be honest, I kind of wish he didn't mention it at all because, well, now I've got something to think about for the next five and a half hours. It's kind of like having a colonoscopy scheduled for the day after your birthday. <laughs> the anticipation of it just ruins everything. But really, what can you do? Don't mind me. Just keeping an eye out for butt-clenching turbulence. Thankfully, that's something I'm not going to have to worry about for at least five hours. Turning my attention back to United 7878 Polaris Business Class, the current situation is pretty good. Beyond good, actually. I can smell breakfast cooking, but before we get to that, let's see if the video entertainment system is more stable than it was on yesterday's flight. This looks much better. Of course, watching video entertainment means having to deal with the low-quality noise-canceling headphones that United provides, and if you remember what I said in my last video, it still applies here. <laughs> These headphones really suck, but they did take my mind off the looming butt-clenching turbulence that's ahead, so there is that. Kicking off the cabin service today were drinks, and yes, there were choices other than water, but this was all that I needed at this exact moment. And check this out. Who remembers the TV show Growing Pains from the late 1980s? This was a total blast from the past. Oh, and one of the advantages to sitting in a bulkhead seat like this was that I could see my breakfast being prepared. And through the magic of video editing, voila. So there were two meal choices on today's flight, which, as you might expect, were the exact same choices that I was faced with yesterday. I decided to go with the waffles this time, if only to make this review different from my last one. And if I'm being totally honest, the eggs that I had yesterday were more my flavor, both literally and figuratively. The waffles were fine. They were incredibly sugary and sweet though, which wasn't exactly what I was in the mood for today, which meant that they didn't do much to satisfy my hunger, which also meant that I was craving eggs and sausage with every bite. I guess it was worth it though, if only to show you that the food in United Business Class these days isn't all that bad. They've basically got choices for any kind of craving. Now I'm faced with a more serious dilemma. Do I try out the flatbed, or do I watch another episode of Growing Pains? the smartest guy out there, so it took me a moment to realize that I could try out the flatbed and watch Growing Pains at the same time. <laughs> I felt like an absolute genius. Although, the headrest in these seats are rock hard, and that floppy armrest is seriously interfering with my lounging, so maybe I need to rethink this. And where better of a place is there to think than sitting on a toilet? It was nice to see that the business class lavatory on the 787 is nicer than it was on the 767, though. It was just the right amount of positivity that I needed to attempt that seat thing again. Now we're talking. The windows have been dimmed, the cabin lights have been switched off, but now I've got a new problem. Bright lights from the galley. Really, though, it wasn't all that big of a deal, especially considering how sleepy I was. <laughs> that sugar high was wearing off fast. So this is it, I guess. Good night, everyone. I'll pick things up again once the butt-clenching turbulence starts near San Francisco. Well, that was nice. Despite not having a blanket to keep me warm, I actually slept all the way across the country. And look at that. The cabin crew was nice enough to leave snacks for me when they came by earlier. I appreciate the gesture, but more sugar at this point would probably kill me. <laughs> Let's just hope that wasn't their intention. Okay, so we'll be landing soon, and I think it's a good time to summarize my feelings about United 7878 Polaris Business Class. Overall, it's a fantastic product. 
I especially like how it's broken up into two separate cabins, and from this experience, I can highly recommend the aft cabin, which is rows 6 and 7. Oh, and surprise, surprise, the turbulence wasn't all that bad during the descent, thank goodness. As a matter of fact, it ended up being really interesting since I got to experience my first ever runway 19 left approach and landing into SFO. Which to most people is probably as exciting as watching paint dry, I know, but this is a very rare occurrence. But anyway, back to my final thoughts. If it weren't for the fact that we did get blankets and pillows on this flight, it may have been one of my top five best domestic business class flights ever. However, <laughs> because I froze my ass off for the past five hours, I'll just say that it was a pretty good flight and leave it at that. Well, the fact that I chose the wrong meal made it less fun as well, but that was squarely on me. Anyway, welcome to San Francisco. I've got about an hour and a half layover here before catching my connecting flight down to San Diego, and <laughs> I'm in dire need of real food. Preferably something with chicken as the main ingredient. Thanks, as always, to the Sandspotter patrons for their continued support, and I hope you all have been enjoying that super nerdy Sandspotter merch. To Aaron Slater, Naomi Slivko, Riley Wingo, and everyone else, I really appreciate having you on board. And there you have it. Rumor has it that Polaris business class on the 777-300 and the 787-10 is really good as well, so you can expect me to give those a try soon. Ish. Not exactly sure when that will be, but it will happen. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.